Trio Band. I want to begin by noting that the SWIG program in Jewish Studies and Social Justice of the University of San Francisco acknowledges our presence on the unceded land of the indigenous Ohlone communities and pays our respects to these traditional caretakers and elders, past, present, and emerging. It is our intention that this acknowledgement plays a role, however infinitesimal, in a much larger process of confronting the past in order to create a not yet, not yet realized future rooted in justice. Let me say thank you to uh, the SWIG Jewish Studies and Social Justice Program faculty and staff who helped make this event possible and to the Department of Theology and Religious Studies for co-sponsoring this event. Let me tell you about two other JSSJ programs we have coming up this semester that I hope you will attend and that you will find interesting and intriguing. On Thursday, November 7th at 6.30 p.m. in Fromm Hall, we have our fifth annual human rights lecture titled Climate Change, Disability, and the Politics of Survival with Rabbi Julia Watts Belser, an associate professor of Jewish studies at Georgetown University. She's a disability activist and an advocate for queer and gender justice. She will deliver the fifth annual SWIG program Human Rights Lecture, bringing ancient Jewish texts into conversation with disability studies, queer theory, and feminist climate ethics. Then on Thursday, November 14th, the following Thursday, also in From Hall, we will have our final event of the semester, which is about Jews of Uganda. As we know, Jews are an amalgam of many peoples and include a multitude of ethnicities, languages, nations, and tribes. Although there have long been sub-Saharan African Jewish communities, little is known about them. So come and learn about the Ugandan Jewish community with their leader, Rabbi Gershom Sizomo. If you'd like to learn more about the work of the Jewish Studies and Social Justice Program, or if you want to sign up for our listserv, if you are not already on it, we don't send too many emails, maximum once a month. There's a sign-in sheet there, and there's green booklets that will tell you all about the program. Tonight, let me tell you about what we're in for. Our event tonight will feature the Cosmic Diaspora Trio Band, which features Jake Marmer on po doing poetry, John Schott on guitars, and Josh Horowitz on keys. This project brings together experimental poetry jazz, and klezmer in eclectic, fluid, and uh, improvised manner. I don't want to say too much more because I think that the, the sort of psychedelic and flowing nature of what will transpire here will open our minds, our hearts, and our souls. So please uh, join me in giving a very, hopefully, warm welcome to the Cosmic Diaspora Trio Band. Thanks for coming. So you're going to hear poems, um, texts inspired by some science fiction tropes and also classic Jewish texts in conversation. Um, and uh, poetry and music are kind of in this interaction organic interaction mode, uh, as you will notice. Our first piece is called Cosmic Deregulation. I lost 
loads of time eating information pills in ship's dark abdomen. We called it library as a joke. Until one evening, in the back of the bar, on a desolate provincial moon, I was introduced to methods of ingesting vacuum and felt cosmos, not beer, running through me in knowledge stead. Consciousness! I called over to the librarian. Consciousness is a ritual, not an organ. And intergalactic history is a contracting theater of shadow puppets performed by my own freezing hands which keep opening, keep opening like goddamn eyes. music gets created behind the closed doors and uh, it's nice to uh, to have a real life encounter you know face to face encounter especially for the kind of art that we do uh, which is uh, improvised at least uh, to an extent uh, improvisation is always a part of it and um, uh, you guys are part of that improvisation it's always different depending on who we are um, with the audience that is in front of us, yeah. What the mic situation is and uh, how, uh, what the temperature is, all part of it. Okay, so um, we're in the in the year of testimonies, and uh, this piece is called Testimony in regard to the vast foam-like umbrella. Of sitting under a slated 
roof in a cold I am standing alone with the tightest optical strain known to man and you asking me to bless your bless your what? translates the invisible. There are others like me, but you, how many of you out there? 
all I know are these brush strokes across my body, your language. Last night, there was a touch of another, a third new hand painting across me. I accepted it as yours, but from deep inside watched counterpoints. Entirely random, the two of you, unaware of each other, can I hide my thoughts from either one? Who am I? In consent and concealment, Last night, I learned I am as invisible to you as you are to me, as both of us are to this new third hand. I am the voice who translates the invisible. I am the voice whose hunger Barstool Elian, if you ever felt like that. talk to and feel heard. You knew you were talking to the rock. Plain old purple rock. Slimy, heavy. You'd never touch one or bring it home. It's a really bad taste to be seen with one of them. But when you needed to talk, there was nothing in the world like those purple rocks. The trick is you had to be absolutely certain you were talking to the rock and it is meaningless. The second you give up completely like that, their ears perk up like boners. Look, there is a chance purple rocks are the way my people decompose. It's a version of skull and bones, maybe. time ago, I dated a girl with purple rock eyes. I tried talking to her eyes the way I've talked to the rock, and I think she figured it out, because she blinded herself the next day. It's not uncommon in the world where I come from, but I was still shaking. You think you know everything 
there is to know about a person. And then she does a thing like this. When I was a kid, my great uncle said, purple rocks are these cosmic eggs that will never hatch. What I do down here in your world, devoid of purple rocks, I talk to my beer. Don't feel hurt for shit, but I do like the taste. And I think purple rocks, if I were to ever taste them, would be kind of similar. A bit sour, a bit bitter, a little bit alive, a little bit dead, and this is why. This is why I come here every night. And sure, you're just another face at the bottom of my glass. But I once heard that ritual precedes myth, which is to say one has to keep on talking. Alternatives to nostalgia and uh, thinking about, let's say, sci fi um, or klezmer, um, other sort of genre things uh, of, of that nature. Are you burning my palms? <laughs> <laughs> um, or, or the score. Um, sometimes people take like the nostalgia perspective, uh, sort of reminds them of uh, a past they've never necessarily experienced. Um, <laughs> And um, I was wondering if there are alternatives, alternative approaches to ethnic music, to, to these kind of uh, wonderful genres uh, that don't need to be historicized, but, but are powerful uh, and can be uh, approached in, in another way. So this is alternatives to nostalgia. To walk backwards into something resembling light, Light shredding at your sides to walk backwards into mud, primordial mud, with something like fire in your voice, to walk into puddles of fire, feeling as manic as the black light illuminating the walk backwards into time, walk across the rear view mirror through something resembling time. into something resembling a ritual, to walk backwards into something resembling a past self, a body unfamiliar in the new text, to walk backwards into yourself resembling light, to walk backwards shedding layers of light, to walk backwards shedding historicity, walk backwards into primordial mud of creation with something like fire in your voice to walk into puddles of nothing feeling fire to walk through nothing feeling fire feeling manic fire to walk into time to walk across the rear view mirror through something resembling time Solo, um, and then we'll, we'll uh, get back. 
whole band. Um, this is a new piece I wrote. Um, it's called Coming In Third. Charlie Chaplin once entered Charlie Chaplin Lookalike Contest and came in third. My son keeps repeating this like a mantra. First it seems funny, then suddenly deepening in earnest. How did that actually happen? What is it about him that made him third? If you entered a contest of your lookalikes, we ask, what place would you get first, he says, because I would be the one most ready for it? Maybe you would be, I think. As for me, this being in the mirror of the page looks, looks less like me getting used to me than it did last time, just as it all changed again. In Charlie Chaplin movies, the tramp falls how many times before he marries the girl before he walks into the thereafter, before he's walking with her down the road, past the first two, past the 22, 102 lookalikes, all those numbers, they arbitrary? Or there are as many lookalikes as the times he fell, really fell. It's like you say, what is it that makes us find ourselves at this here number? This is called Animal. What? <laughs> Should we call it something else? No, I <laughs> right. Wasn't the light of the unpronounceable name? Wasn't the shadow of another future burning my fingers? But the way the craft encircled the body with intimacy so ultimate it could only be achieved by a machine. As it mimicked the splintering emotional carpet, she unrolled every time the noise dropped. And for eight seconds, when she was utterly alone, and as all space settlers ritualistic about this knowledge, you're being disassembled into a diaspora of atoms that know nothing of each other's existence, know nothing of each other's entanglement before coming together again like water poured into a new glass, but without any objective guarantee of continuity. The depth of attachment you folks have to your bodies. Even your word possession. I learned K 
casts a shadow, vastly pedestrian and esoteric boat. What I found, waking up inside yours, wasn't the amenities I was used to. Neither privacy nor hospitality. And mobility was shit too. It was as if, and I'm not superstitious, it was as if your inanimate innards were watching me, were clamping onto me, like I was a thing to, to digest, to sweat out. You naturally were out and gone, but your scraps, whatever you call those, they were everywhere. Can consciousness cling to ligaments, limbs, frazzled acids and nerves? Imagine walking into a taxi and finding yourself in a trench. It suddenly dawned on me, your own ride within your body must be a lot like what I felt. Thickening darkness, vertigo of language, this is home? Stranger yet? thought got things moving, the transport, as it were, no longer pedestrian, I arrived on the next breath, never moved faster in my entire life. Let's go warp soliloquy. this frequency of asteroidal backwash. Welcome to the frequency of diversions that chipped off of the great and final war. You are listening to the scrapes, to the channel, to the number of genitalia renditions you will never get to the bottom of. I came here to render myself. I told everyone who showed up at the gig, expecting comedy, but kept popping, kept sliding off of the balloon. Where there are solids, there are bound to be treasons. And also, Silence of Jupiter is the biggest fossil record in the book. Call it 
voided contract. Call it void contractions. But to overhear a boss footsteps, to change tracks, to repurpose your mind as if every little space journey is another Babylonian exile? That's how everyone one day will land in the nowhere we call the president. I heard a voice say, Jake, Jake. don't let the poem's critical mass hijack its vanishing point. Someone was asleep on my shoulder all through that game. How many sunrises? can one see at once. My last name is Traffic, and I ran out. Everything is a performance. <laughs> like eating, <laughs> uh, drinking. Um. Perform some unnatural acts. <laughs> Hopefully not. No, just fairly conventional. Um, but it is a pleasure to perform uh, for you all uh, here. Um, thank you. My education was a forgery, man. I used scholarship funds to pay off those who tamper with the records. They lawyered me out of my alien appearance. They lawyered me out of my alien clothes. But they couldn't fix the damn accent. you must. Records are the eggs laid by karma itself and all of those composing and all of those tampering. No, this is not a conspiracy theory because I am the living proof. I am a record in conversation with its own mutation. form of vaccination against my own shitty origins. Wasn't meant to be a hostile takeover. Teaching is as menial of a job as you can get on a spacecraft. My mind stayed in the corner during crew's collective dream and lifting. And when I rejoined, when I started deregging, when I started mumbling and improvising over the records of others, it was a mere impulse. It was just a naked thought. I could no longer control. the only form of mysticism. When mutation 
is the only genre of imagination. The stars and jam in the vacuum of pure guilt. Had our consciousness not gotten so intertwined, I'd call this a tribunal, but isn't it? A mere burning turbine, this ship, this craft, is made of them. with an epigraph from, uh, um, from Samuel Delaney's Nova. Samuel De Delaney is a great science fiction writer who imagines sci-fi as future of spirit, future of myth, future of gender. Um, and uh, in one of his books, he, um, he describes this band called the Tohu Bohus, um, which of course comes from Hebrew uh, word Tohu Bohu, like the primeval void chaos, um, and I loved it, just the image of it, and try to imagine what this futuristic Tohu Bohu's band might sound like. The intelligentsia had accepted the Tohu Bohu's as legitimate music. Their jarring rhythms tumbled across the wall, a light sculpture in the corner, twisted, flickered, grew with tones. Samuel Delaney, Nova. It's music because we agree that it is. Invisible horn vomits black light inside a flare book. Nature's quantifiable coincidence. We are the fermented nerve. We the singed atavism. Singed. Sound paints itself as your portrait on psychoacoustic cellophane. Wraps it around something small, something vile. Bending the string, purple fingers rise far above guitar's ringed neck. Far above the bruised mouth and its stratosphere. A pile of near voices walking harm into harmony. Try to summon a black hole. Try to stumble into one. Burned eyes looking for triggers. The Tohu Bohu's signature move. vision turns into molecular tessiology, black hole dream to drain semantics, thread sons, so the poem could congeal, accretion of dissonance, complete, elegant, and because it is, because it is possible, purple fingers gather so much paraphrase. So much paraphrase, there is no doubt. There is no doubt left about them. About the beginning. Heaven is a swamp 
Your voice is sinking in. And this swamp groove is the song of its mangled footsteps. Please don't panic at the disco. It's really more of a plea than a song. It's kind of more of a cry for help than a plea. But it's, it's also true. It's, well, it's, it's really not, it's more like of a, a mythic plea. It's a song more than it's a cry for help. In the, in the song form, a musical plea. Or sort of musical. Well, you know, sort of musical. Yeah. It gets musical some, at, at some point. I don't want to give it away, guys, no. even though it's the last number. But thank you. Thank you so much for coming and being here. Um, Don't panic at the disco! Don't panic at the disco! 
is gone. I am the panic of your disco. Please don't panic at the disco. You drew in a closed door. In the middle Please of the sky. Panic at the disco. In the middle of the sky and anthropomorphizing it too. You can put a cactus up somebody's rump to get them dancing. Please I don't panic at the disco. I am your alien panic. Please don't panic at the disco. I got nowhere to go tonight. So I'm just gonna crawl inside your pop song. I'm gonna crawl inside your pop song and sing. Sing my heart out. Thanks for coming. Uh, thank you, Aaron and Norman. And thank you for